Greetings and welcome to another video. And this one today, we're having another look at a 21st century Commodore 64 game. Now the game in question today is Wolfling, that came out from Lazy Cow, and it doesn't have a date on it, but looking at their HIO page and the comments on there, the earliest comments are from three years ago at the time of recording, so we're going to say 2019 this come out. It's a platform game, very, I suppose, Castlevania in its in its layout, but with with a lot of, of classic 8-bit tropes going on. Now in this, you play as Ling, who's cursed with the blood of the wolf. So from their page, it says Ling awakes in Baron Baronov's dungeon. The Baron fears all creatures of the night, and Ling knows that her dark heritage is the reason for her imprisonment. Can she escape from the dungeon? Can she break her curse? Not with me fucking playing, she can't, because I've had one go at this already and I was shit, so you get to watch my second go. Lucky you. Right, this came out for Windows, which is kind of, you can switch between the Commodore 64 and NES version. There's a version for Mac, Linux, the NES, and the C64. And obviously, me being me, we're going to look at the C64 version. And, you know, graphically it's quite appealing. Um, there's there's some good level layouts. The controls are good. There is a bit of inertia on the main character, as I discovered the first time I played it, which, oh, you're going to get to see as we go through this. But I, I think it's a game that's worthy of a look. And... It's, it, it's good fun. There are a couple of infuriating things in it, which I'm sure I'm going to stumble across uh, as I play through it. But on the whole, it's a pretty good game. I would recommend you have a look at it. Obviously, as usual, links to the game will be below. <laughs> Right then, let's get a game going. So, what happens at the beginning is you get chucked into prison and that's where you start. And there doesn't appear to be a lot you can do currently. Now those white lines coming down from the ceiling um, all over the place, that's moonlight which automatically turns you into the wolf. But you can switch between them, but for the minute I'll stay as the wolf. And as you saw, when I broke out of that, you do what I would call a Sonic the Hedgehog spin by pulling down on the joystick and the wolf rolls and smashes through things. So you say, say and hold button to morph. So you do that and you turn back into Ling. Now she's got kind of a punch attack and the wolf's got a bite attack as well as his roll. And it is a nice scrolling platform game. And I suppose the puzzles in this game really are working out how to get round the level. Oh, bollocks. Well, we'll just do that bit again. So you've got things to avoid, like spikes on the floor, which I didn't do there. What I really like about this game and the reason I've included it in this series of videos is the animation on the main sprites is absolutely gorgeous, particularly the wolf. I'm just not going to swear there because you know what I was going to say. Yeah, the animation on the sprites is really, really nice, you know, considering they're very simple colours. I like them anyway. And it is silky smooth. I mean I'm using I'm using Vice for this, but you play this on a real 64. It is silky smooth. Jesus fucking wept. I think I've worked out what I'm actually supposed to do there now. I think you're guessing just by watching this how my first go win. <laughs> But yeah, the inertia in this is 
is one of the downsides. I, I can see why they've done it, because it adds an element of control to it. But it is really, really finicky sometimes. Alright, so if I go down there, and then up... Yeah, that looks better. No, 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 no! Oh, I thought she was going to go all the way off then. See? Inertia. Hey! Yeah, so there's little things to avoid, like timing puzzles here. So, if I go now, wait for that one to shoot and that one. Oh, fuck, that was close. That nearly got me right in the head. I'm pretty sure I can run straight across these gaps here, as long as I don't stop. Nice. I could probably do with that heart on the other side of the screen. So again, I need to time this right. Oh, another close one. Right, so those lines coming in through the side there denote moonlight, which means I'm going to change into the wolf. I should still be able to jump up and get that if I change back. There we go. Right, and we're probably going to go outside now. Oh, and that's a new piece of music. And what looks like an octopus on the side of a building. But yeah, look at the animation on the wolf. Really, really good. I must have spent ages watching dogs running about to get that right. Another plus point for this game is music and sound effects, which we seem to be getting a lot of in the uh, more modern games. Always a welcome bonus. I know it's something that we've uh, complained about in the past. I know um, Lucosa doesn't like it, and nor do I, because you've got three channels. If you can use two channels for music with all the uh, tricks they use to make it sound a lot more, there's no reason not to have sound effects. And I suppose the fact that there's no pressure from labels to get something out by a certain date gives these developers more time to work on it. And I'm quite pleased about it. I do quite like the Sid music on this as well. Nice beefy bassy soundtracks. Where's he gonna go? Come on! underneath. I'm not sure what they are. They do look like weird crab-like octopuses. Octopodes. Well, what is that thing? Well, can't get up there. And, oh. Well, it didn't look like we was in the moonlight. Come on, I want to jump up there and get that gem. Yeah, it does seem to be a uh, a bit of a learning curve as to where you can and can't change. So clearly, the sky must be still overhead and I'm in moonlight. I can try jumping on that, no. Oh, we'll have one more go. No. Also, notice at the top when you change between Ling and the wolf, your little life icons change from hearts to paws. I think that's a nice touch. Right, now I'm away from the moonlight. I should be able to change back. Well, when I need to. That's handy because I went underneath his bullet. I think if I'd have been Ling then... Well, maybe not. <laughs> I was going to say I could have avoided it, but didn't look like it. I had to go and run and land on the spikes, didn't I? Right, let's have a look down here. Some weird little gnomey elf type creatures. You do give them a fair wallop, they do slide back well. Right, don't touch that, it kills you. He says, touching it again. Yeah, I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't fully researched this game. So there's a lot of bits in it. Oh, I'm not exactly sure how you, you do it. Like the little icons of the keys on the side there. I don't believe I've found a key yet. So I'm just going for the platform action at the moment. Just to show you some of the graphics. 
There's definitely a lot of level design. I'm not sure how many rooms there are in the game, but uh, there's no way I've seen them all. Well, I know that much for nothing. Right, back into the moonlight. And back outside. With, um, I think they're mushrooms, they just look like strange knob creatures. I'm only joking, devs. They look fine. They look like mushrooms. <laughs> We're going to have a look and see what's over here. Get some points in by killing them. Oh, a heart. That'll do. Uh, back to the octopuses. Oh, there's an archer up there as well. Oh, you bastard. Just caught me. Good. Have that. There does seem to be a, an element of pixel perfect required uh, with some of these jumps, which is which is all right if you've got a controller with a jump button. If you've got a controller where you're having to press up to jump like I am here, uh, this poses a bit more of a problem. I don't think I'm going to be able to get up there to get that. I'm assuming later in the game there's going to be something that will let you go outside in the moonlight as Ling and then you'll be able to get up to some of these higher platforms or I might work out a better way of doing it. But yeah, you don't even get a chance to move. As soon as you change back, it's like she appears and in instantly back into, uh, well, let's call it wolf mode. Right, so we'll head back and go back inside. Oh, this looks like it's going to be fun. I need to do about three or four pixel perfect jumps here. Bollocks. <laughs> Might be here for a minute. Let's see if we can get a run up. No, because I'm still going to bash my head on it. And I've definitely got to do it to Wolf because I can't turn back into Ling. Come on. Just across to the other side. Oh, for fuck's sake. Five hours later. Right. <laughs> right, this time. Yes. Right, back in we go. Right, get away from the moonlight. I should be able to turn back. I really like the way the SID changes depending on the location you're in. But that is a nice touch. Right, just got to get up here. Oh, for fuck's sakes, here we go again. Bollocks! Many, many minutes later. There we go. That's it, we're up. No, don't judder on the edge of the rock. That's it. Up you go. This bastard's going to land straight away. And there's a key there. I'm not sure how to get it. But I'm not sure what opens that up. Because I don't seem to be able to change into the wolf here. I don't know if that's because I'm low on energy or what. Like I say, I haven't researched that part of it. Try twatting it a few times and see what happens. Definitely not going to change, right? Let's hit it. No, that's not having it either. I've got to say, this uh, Princess Ling, um, she she knows her rolls and breakfalls really well. Better than me, anyway. <laughs> Bastards. Right, back into the moonlight. Now, will I be able to jump back up there as the wolf? I don't think I will. 
Mind you say, no, I don't seem bad gap there as well. Sorry, I'm going outside. Oh dear, death by killer knob mushroom. Oh, there you go. That's a basic, quick glance at the game. There's, uh, there appears to be a lot to do in that. But, um, obviously I haven't touched. I've only scratched the surface. But what a nice game. It's, it's a really pretty game. And as far as I know, there is a version, I don't think it's out yet, called um, Wolfling Reloaded, which is going to sort of spruce the graphics up and the sound a little bit. Although the, the sound doesn't need sprucing up. And that's going to be a, a fuller package that's coming to the 64 as well. But I'm not sure when, when that's coming out. So this is kind of like a, a, a concept game, I suppose, for that. Let's have a look at some of the uh, graphics on that. So as you can see, some nice parallax scrolling going on there. The graphics are very similar, but I do like the backgrounds. They're really effective. Especially that one in the forest. That looks, really gives the picture some depth. That actually really does give it some depth. That almost looks 3D. Yeah, it's, it kind of reminds me of the way um, Sarah Jane Avery done some of the levels in um, Soul Force. Uh, with, like, with a background, obviously she had way more layers of parallax, but it's that similar sort of uh, depth of image that I think looks really good. Yeah, that works well. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting hold of this, the, the, the reloaded version. But that is... Wolfling on the Commodore 64. Now, I suppose I need to give it a rating because that's what I do in these videos. So, starting off with the graphics, I'm going to give the graphics uh, an. I'm going to give them an 8 out of 10 because it would have been more, but having seen the, um, the reloaded version with all the parallax scrolling, I think there's room for improvement on this version. So, we'll give them an 8. The sound. I'm also going to give an 8 because I really like the uh, SID tunes that are in this. And I really like the fact that we've got sound effects and music. Uh, playability. Playability, I'm going to drop it down to a 7. It's good, don't get me wrong, it is good. But that inertia and some of the pixel perfect jumps are, are going to infuriate a lot of people and put them off of playing it. So, overall, overall, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna keep it at an 8. I reckon it's an 8 out of 10 game. It's, um, it is good. There's been a lot of effort put into it with the level design and the graphics and, and the music. And I think uh, 8 out of 10 is a perfectly deserving score for a game of this type. So, that's it for this video. I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to record the music from the reloaded trailer off of my SID chips, chuck that on the end, and play out with it. So, enjoy that. But until the next video, thank you very much for watching, and laters.